And now we'll finish up our chapter seven screencasts with a screencast on bulk transport. So we've been talking so far about active transport and passive transport, diffusion, osmosis, facilitated diffusion. Um, and that is good for bringing in this stuff, small molecules and water. Okay, so they enter and leave the cell through the lipid bilayer or via transport proteins if it's non if it's polar. Um, but if you have large molecules, um, big polysaccharides, proteins, um, little organisms, bacteria, um, they cannot cross the membrane via those methods. They have to basically cross the membrane in bulk via vesicles. Okay, and we call this bulk transport. Um, uh, exiting the cell is exocytosis, entering the cell is endocytosis. Um, and the most important thing to remember is this, bulk transport requires energy. It is active. Okay, anytime you're kind of restructuring the membrane, it's going to require energy in the form of ATP. So let's have a look. Um, exocytosis, exo meaning exit, is when um, uh, molecules leave the cell, large molecules leave the cell. So in exocytosis, transport vesic vesicles, um, usually from the Golgi apparatus, so you make a protein or something big in the ER, it gets transported to the Golgi, it's packaged, it's sorted, it's modified, then it gets uh, shipped out in vesicles to the plasma membrane. So they migrate to the membrane, fuse with it, and release the contents um, outside the cell. Okay. Um, lots of secretory cells, cells that secrete hormones or other proteins, antibodies, um, they use exocytosis to export their products. Okay. Um, it's also how we get wastes out of the cell. Bringing things into the cell um, is called endocytosis into cell. Okay. Um, in endocytosis, the cell takes in large molecules by forming vesicles from the plasma membrane. Okay. So the plasma membrane kind of pulls things in. Um, endocytosis is the reverse process. Um, and it involves different proteins. And there are three main types of endocytosis, okay? One is phagocytosis, and these are all from Greek words, Greek word meaning to eat, um, is cellular eating. This takes in solids, solid particles. <clears throat> Two, penocytosis means drinking. So this takes in liquids and dissolved molecules. Um, and then the third type is receptor mediated endocytosis. And this is the most specific of the three. All right, so let's take a look at those three. So first we're going to look at um, phagocytosis. And phagocytosis, the cell engulfs a large particle in a vacuole. Okay, and then the vacuole then fuses with the lysosome to digest the particle. So this brings in anything solid. So here we have um, an electromicrograph of an amoeba eating a bacteria. Okay, we watch the video of the amoebas eating those paramecium. That's phagocytosis. So what happens is the cell kind of reaches out its plasma membrane in the form of a pseudopod. Uh, pseudo means fake and pod means foot, it's these little fake feet. Um, and they basically end up wrapping all the way around the particle and meeting, and then um, the membrane fuses and it's brought in into a food vacuole. And that goes, fuses with the lysosome, digests the food, the bacteria, the paramecium's, whatever, and uses it for energy parts, um, all that kind of good stuff. So that's cell eating, phagocytosis. Now let's go on to penocytosis, which is cell drinking. Um, so molecules are kind of uh, gulped into vesicles. Um, similar way 
uh, to phagocytosis. Um, so you have basically the plasma membrane kind of pulls in rather than reaching out um, and invaginates and forms this little pocket. As it does, the extracellular fluid basically just gets pulled in to the vesicle. And whatever flows in and whatever is dissolved inside of it um, is then pinched off and brought into the cell. Okay, and here's um, a electromicrograph of an actual cell forming a whole bunch of little penocytic vesicles um, and bringing in just basically whatever is in the content. And again, this is not specific. Like phagocytosis, just gulping in whatever is there. Receptor mediated endocytosis is specific. Okay, so it binds uh, ligands to receptors, and then that trigger, triggers the formation of vesicles. So a ligand is any molecule that binds specifically to a receptor site of another molecule. So let's have a look. So you have these receptors here, okay? And you see they have a little binding site. And if the appropriate ligand comes along that fits into the binding site, fits in right there, um, it will bind. So this molecule doesn't fit, this molecule does fit. So that binds to the receptor. And then the receptors migrate into, you get this special vesicle that's coated with these coat proteins. Um, it invaginates the membrane pulls in and pulls the receptors in with it, pinches off and brings basically those, to, I mean, you get some other random stuff in from the extracellular fluid that is in the vesicle, um, but you get much more of the actual molecule you wanna bring in, your ligand, okay? So you get much more of the ligand, right? So again, this is specific and brings in exactly what you want to get. And here's some electromicrographs of the actual process. Okay, and I think that is all. So um, these are how, that uh, we just talked about how large particles, um, large amounts of fluid get brought into the cell. And again, remember it is an active process. Um, so that's all folks um, for Chapter 10, no, EGAD, chapter seven. All right, have a good day.